Christmas, guys, and welcome to December's edition of She Flourishes, a podcast by women and for women. I am so excited to have Brenda Polk with us today. Uh, so we'll start with Brenda. I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Hey, thank you, Eden, for inviting me to uh, join you on this. A um, little bit about me. Uh, my We came to Rock Hill um, and First Baptist Church 11 years ago. Oh. My husband, Steve, is the executive pastor here at First Baptist Rock Hill, and we are are so thankful to be in this church and in this yeah. ministry. We love First Baptist mm-hmm. and uh, Rock, First Baptist Rock Hill and um, came from a difficult situation prior to it. And so we found so much love and support and encouragement and mm-hmm. all here at First Baptist Rock Hill. And so it's really awesome. I am a mom of four boys. A boy mom. I'm a boy mom. <laughs> Um, straight up, and um, I have uh, two, we call them two big boys and two little boys. Um, I have two adult sons, one of which has uh, my first grandchild, which is also a boy, yeah. and that makes me that just. It makes me so happy. You are so cute. He, and so he's cute. so adorable. Yeah. He's so adorable. And we love him so much. And then we have two, what we affectionately call the little boys, but they are certainly not little, um, mm-hmm. with uh, uh, our two younger sons that are in first year in college and sophomore in high school. Um, so, I, yeah, that's who I, I, I am. I love that. Boy yeah. mom. Boy and mom. And you got a grandchild. That's, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, I it's pretty that. cool. It's yeah. pretty cool. We love First Baptist, too. We came here, I guess it's almost three or four years ago now. I know. It's just the best. It's like, so great it's to have you here. Such an encouraging, encouraging yeah. environment. Well, that's great. Well, Brandon, I want to ask you: How did you come to know Jesus as your Savior? <sighs> Thank you for asking <laughs> me this question. Yeah. Um, I was born to um, a Southern Baptist pastor, mm-hmm. and I was born ten months to the day after my parents um, got married. Wow. <laughs> to the day wow. um, after they got married, and um, my dad was a had a powerful transformation um, in his life when Jesus radically saved him, and so when I was born. I was born into this amazing home that was very Mm Jesus-centered. My mom had come to faith um, in her 20s and my dad as a much older adult. And so their intention was to make sure that we knew Jesus. Yeah. So part of my testimony is there's never been a day in my life that I have doubted that Jesus was both real Mm -hmm. and that he loved me. Wow. Which, as I've gotten older and in ministry and so forth, that's very, that's much more rare than I wish it was. Yeah. Much more rare than I wish it was. But Mm -hmm. it was a gift to me. Um, And then my sister that was born a little less than two years um, after I was born, um, to be raised in this incredibly Jesus-centered home. Mm. So much so that, I mean, we, we, we had a red quilt that my great-grandmother had made. Mm-hmm. And we would pray, and that would represent the blood of Jesus. And that. if we needed to put, we needed to have something covered by the blood of Jesus, we would put it under that quilt. Wow. And so at two and three and my earliest recollections of life, Jesus was always a part of it. Mm. My dad was the assistant superintendent at a home for alcoholic men. And um, he also did a lot of like revival preaching. Mm-hmm. And so my our adventures revolved around him going to different places to preach revivals and yeah. um, we would take a camper sometimes with us to spend the <laughs> night in the camper and you know an and all of that it was an adventure yeah. but it always revolved around daddy daddy preaching these revival services well, one thing that my parents were very clear on was that a relationship with Jesus was a personal one, mm-hmm. not one that you're born into. And while I had this amazing like, family, being raised knowing Jesus, going to church, being part, I still knew that I was a sinner. Mm-hmm. And that was, all, that was all part of it. We need Jesus because we're sinners. Yeah. 
and we are separated from him until we come to faith. Now listen, when you are four years old and you are five years old and you are sitting in those revival services mm-hmm. where your dad is constantly preaching the gospel, yeah. you know Jesus exists, you know he's real, you know he loves you, and yet it becomes very real to you that you are separated mm-hmm. from him at an early age. And so it was... I was, I was, I think it was the summer between my, maybe my kindergarten year and my first grade year mm-hmm. that we'd gone to a revival service and daddy was preaching that revival. And I was sitting there with my mom and I realized I needed Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yes, he was real. Yes, he loved me. Yes, we had this, um, you know, great, not perfect. So don't hear it as perfect yeah. and like, you know, not perfect. But he was real, Mm -hmm. and he was real in what real life was. And I was sitting in that revival service, and and Daddy gave the invitation. Mm -hmm. And I realized I needed Jesus, Mm -hmm. and that I needed to ask him to forgive me of my sin. Was I young? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But you understood. But I understood, and I knew Mm -hmm. that my... my human sin separated me from a God that loved me so much. Yeah. And I needed to choose at that point to accept him as my savior. Mm-hmm. And I did. And I, and I still very vividly remember my mom, you know, me, me going, mom, I need Jesus. Mm-hmm. And me walking forward and her taking me back into a little room and sitting me up. This is a very small church in Stark, Florida, of all places, <laughs> and sitting me up on a washing machine. And going through the plan of salvation and praying with me so that I could choose to point my life towards Christ at that time. Hmm. Man, am I glad I did. Wow. Man, am I. Now, again, not perfect, Mm -hmm. but I know for a fact that Jesus came into my heart at that time. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit at that point filled me. (laughs) He really did fill me. Mm -hmm. And because the Holy Spirit created in me a very sensitive spirit mm-hmm. towards sin in my life. Now I disobeyed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I I mean I I was a kid. Yeah. And yet the Holy Spirit was very real. Yeah. And 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 I knew I needed to ask Jesus for forgiveness. And it prevented me from doing some really dumb things yeah. that a lot yeah. of kids get into. Mm-hmm. And 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 I didn't go that way. Yeah. The other thing is that my parents, in that culture of being very Mm -hmm. Jesus-centered, helped to give me those guidelines. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I came. I mean, that's how I came to know Jesus. And And um, how cool is it that it was under your daddy's preaching? Oh, absolutely. I I just imagine that being a very special experience for them to get to see their daughter. Absolutely. You know, accepting Christ. Well, that's so cool. I have a similar experience. I was in seventh grade. Yeah. Actually, I was still fairly young, just got out of, it was the summer after seventh grade year. Yeah. And I had a very Jesus-loving family, too, and I had heard the gospel time after time, and I'd always just kind of turned a deaf ear toward it, because I knew Jesus loved me. I knew, yes. I knew the gospel story. I could quote it to you. Absolutely. Right? But it was one night at camp that our youth pastor was preaching a gospel message like he always has, and the Holy Spirit just convicted me of my sin, and like, and he said, Eden, I love you specifically, and I died for you specifically. So it's so cool when when Jesus makes that real for us, yes. and that relationship becomes a just a personal relationship. Yes. Well, that's really cool, Brenda. Yes. And how cool is it that your parents discipled you, and now you as a parent get to disciple it's, your boys, and I'm it sure... It's such an amazing gift. Yeah, and I'm sure some of the things they've taught you, you're able to translate into the Absolutely. life of your boys. So, and that's my next question. So, as a mother of boys, what does it look like to disciple those in your family? Let <laughs> me just tell you, boys are um, boys are a special breed. Yeah. And um, one of my things that I I often say is I'm a one trick pony. Mm-hmm. I know boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I get these wonderful girls when they marry girls mm-hmm. into our family. You know and. Um, and, and I know boys, and they are strong-willed. Yeah. They are hard-headed. They are, ener- I mean, energy like nobody's business. Mm-hmm. And my boys, all four of them are unique creations of God. Yeah. And uh, one of the ways in discipling them that I have found to be the most valuable thing is my own consistency. 
Mm. So That's in good. our family, we have something we call family core values. Mm -hmm. And we've got this list of family core values that are biblical values and some that are just who we are yeah. um, as family, but all foundation on a lot of things in Proverbs, a lot of, um, a lot of scripture, a lot of foundation that just revolve around the, the right way to live yeah. according to God's word. Mm -hmm. And one of those key family core values is our family goes to church every Sunday, no matter what. I love that. Hmm. We go to church. Mm -hmm. And there have been times when it's been difficult. We go to church on vacation. Hmm. It's part of who we are. Mm -hmm. And so discipling my boys starts with that foundation of weekly consistency, being in a believing body of Christ every week. Yeah. And the first time that that was really challenged truly was during COVID when, mm -hmm. you know, when all of everything was shut down. It was shut down. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Everything was shut down. And we had to make the just It's always been kind of easy. I mean, we've loved yeah. our churches. Right. I love church. Mm -hmm. Part of growing up in a pastor's home. I mean, you, you, you know, some kids come out where they don't love it. Yeah. I've always loved church. Mm -hmm. I love God's people, even when God's people are flawed. Yeah. And even when people say they're hypocritical, Jesus is still in the body yeah. that is the church. That and is you can't the replace earth, that. And you can't replace it. Yeah. And so that has been critical to discipling my boys, mm -hmm. seeing that it's not wishy-washy in our world. Yeah. That's, that's preeminent over all else, mm -hmm. over sports, mm -hmm. over... Over, over, and, and during COVID, we were on our couch watching the service at a time on Sunday morning together as a family because it's a core value that we go to church. Yeah, and your boys will always know too. Hey, mom and dad, they pro, they will always know. And that. can I tell that you, is so cool. it's um, my adult sons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm God is God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. And that's one of the things that I, I treasure most. They saw that consistency, and now both of them actively marrying godly women who are desiring that's to so be cool. actively involved consistently in a church. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. I remember as a little girl, I guess it was more toward like fifth grade that I started to care more about how I look and how I presented myself, yeah. you know, went to church and stuff. So I just remember, you know, I was still riding to church with my parents. And we had to be there at 8.30, and Mom was very adamant. Mom and Dad, we're getting there at 8.30. It's not yes. going to be 8.31. We're getting there yes. on time. But I would just stand in front of the mirror forever, and they said, I don't care if your hair is not brushed. Get in the car. That's right. Then it didn't matter. That's right. It didn't matter. They said, however you're going to come, we're going to church. That's right. And so now it's just it's a, it's a habit for me. I right. know Sunday mornings, that's where I'm going. That's where we are. Yeah. And that was foundational to that was foundational to me growing up. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, growing up in a pastor's home, that is what we, that's what we did. Yeah. There was nothing else. I mean, I never considered anything else on Sunday mornings. Mm-hmm. There, there's, there's nothing else to do. Right. There's nothing else That's to do. That's the thing that we do. That is. And it's not just what we do. It's mm. who we are. Mm. Yeah. That's so powerful. It's who we are mm -hmm. as believers in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it's not out of ritual. Yeah. It's not out of, I mean, sometimes it's out of obligation. You do the right thing mm -hmm. because it's the right thing. Yeah. Whether you feel like it or not is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. You do the right thing because it's the right thing. And feelings follow. <laughs> yes. And that's that consistency you were that's talking right. about. That's yeah. right. And and I and I I cannot under I cannot stress enough mm. the value of that in raising your children. Yeah. That you set those standards of who we are as a family. And like I said, in our family we call them family core values. Yeah. It's a core value as a family. We go to church. I love that. It's who we are. Yeah. And that, and again, that's a part, and I am not saying at all that we resign the um, 
the discipling of our children to the church. Right. That's not part of it. Mm -hmm. Because as a part of that, our children always saw us being involved. Yeah. Because I've yeah. always, we've always been involved in mm -hmm. church. And they we've, want to now. That's right. Because they've seen you guys do it. Oh my yeah. goodness. I can't tell you how mm -hmm. valuable that is. Yeah. Now, stressful, let me tell you. <laughs> when that fourth one came along... And we were, and Steve was already in ministry, yeah. and I was left at home. Where were y'all at this point? We were, were, we were in Memphis, Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee. at that okay. time, okay. and we were in a small church, and so there were only two full-time staff members. Wow. So Finley was born, Bless and you. Landry was born, <laughs> and I had two, like 11 and 9, and then Landry, and then, you know, and you know, preteen and an you know, older child. You had some and ages there. There's two little bit. ones you know, coming along. <laughs> Can I tell you, you develop systems because it's who we are, mm -hmm. and we made it happen. I still sing on the praise team. Yeah, you work around the system. You, you work knew. around. The, we knew what the core value was, yeah. and we didn't make that wasn't a compromise. Everything mm -hmm. else became how do we make this happen, not will yeah. we. And I love that y'all never made excuses either. Y'all always no. kept it consistent. And yes. so that's what I, I want to speak to the moms out there. So I know as a mom um, of four boys, you're pretty busy. <laughs> There's a lot, the man. Least. There's a lot, yeah. <laughs> so, and that's one of the things, you know, as moms, ladies, I know that it can be busy, busy seasons, especially around the holidays, right? So, Brenda, I want to ask you this question. So, what is a creative way to disciple women around you who have busy lives and busy schedules, even with lots of kids and yeah, things like yeah. that? Yeah, kids and activities. And I tell you, you think it's busy when they're babies. <laughs> Does it get it, busier? It gets busier. Yeah. It gets busier. It gets it gets, I think, harder. Yeah. You know, they can do more things on their own, and yet it's it just becomes harder. There become so many distractions mm -hmm. that we can allow in. Yeah. I would say the very first thing you, you I mean, you've got to do is set your priorities. Yeah. What is priority for you? Um, and your faith really is the only thing that you get to um, teach your children that they get to take with them. Mm. Traditions, mm. they sometimes change. Mm -hmm. People move, people pass away. Things have to change with traditions. Yeah. But your faith is, is something that your children get to take with them. That's awesome. And if you make that a priority mm -hmm. in your prayer time as a family, your consistency in 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 serving the Lord, your own consistency mm -hmm. with your quiet time and being in God's word, knowing God's word. Yeah. Making it a priority in your own life, even if it's just a little time. Because I tell you, when you're exhausted and that baby's little and that toddler is into everything mm -hmm. and you haven't got much sleep, all of that. God knows those times, yeah. and the grace abounds in those times mm -hmm. in our daily life. But we find respite when we are connected mm -hmm. to a to a believing body of Christ. Yeah, and I, I, there's there's so much value in that as a priority for a young mom in those busy yeah. seasons to make that. A, a big priority, mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. then and then let let day to day you know things mm -hmm. be opportunities to teach your children based on what you've learned. Yeah, you know, go back to how do we teach the faithfulness of God? You we talk about that. Let me tell you what God did. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how God answered this prayer for me. That's part of a normal conversation. And in they're our seeing world. how your faith is your own, uh, yes. like, and it's yes. personal for you. And it's personal. Yeah. That's let cool. me let me tell you what God has done here. Let me tell you this prayer that I prayed for you. Mm. I pray over my children again, much like my dad did for us. Yeah. So many beautiful things that I brought forward that I'm so grateful. For his consistency yeah. and his teaching, praying out loud over your children, mm -hmm. being aware of where they are spiritually, praying with them when they're struggling. Yeah. Not like it's some magic, mm -hmm. but sincerely knowing that there's a faithful God that loves them, cares for them, and wants the best for them, and then wants to answer those prayers. Yeah. 
Yeah. That, I mean, that's just huge. That it's is just huge. making it part of your family culture. Yeah. As just who you guys to are. Who you are. Yeah. It's I remember when I was uh, growing up, every single morning I would wake up and I would get ready for school and there would be a new scripture verse from my mom on the mirror. I love that. It would either be out of Romans or whatever she was currently reading. Yeah. She would just plaster a little verse on a post-it note and stick it to the... So now I find myself doing that yeah. in, our, in our bathroom mirror. I'll put scripture Absolutely. as I'm getting... And it's just like, I picked up that from her, yep. you know, so that her faith was her own. Right. And I'm owning my faith now. And it's just cool to see how, how moms and dads really right. do influence our faith. So. A few years ago... I became convicted by the passage in Deuteronomy where that God told the children of Israel to write his word mm. on the door frames of their house yeah. and write the word of God on the walls of your home so that that was central to your home. And I kind of went, how, how could I do that? Mm -hmm. And um, when I, that's another thing, ask when God likes, how could I do that in my world? What does yeah. that look like? And how could that look like at the Polk House? Right. I became very convicted by that. And I, I thought, that's got to be possible. Yeah. <laughs> and can I tell you, as soon as I started asking God, how do I do that? To surround our home environment with the word of God mm. all over the place. Yeah. Can I tell you, he started bringing art that was scripture. Wow. Into like it would just appear. It would, I mean, it, and it, it kind of strange, you know. I would see a thing in Hobby Lobby. Oh, maybe I need that. That's or someone would house. gift it yeah. to us. Or there would be a scripture that I would go, I need to create a poster of that and frame <laughs> yeah. it. Or I would find these um, stick-on things that mm. were scripture, That's and so I could cool. put them all around our house. Mm. And now. Not every wall, but almost every wall in our house or every door has some scripture yeah. that I have put on it so that the word of God is ever present all around mm. our home yeah, and therefore ever present around my children when they're there mm -hmm. and then ever present prayed over them when they go out into a world where I'm not always. Yeah. And so much like your mom mm -hmm. did that for you, there's so many ways you can do it. Oh, yeah. So many you ways you can do it. Get creative with it. Get creative with it. That's Absolutely. So cool. I love that. Well, Brenda, you touched a little bit on this earlier. I was going to ask you who has influenced your life the most, the disciple of Christ. Oh, <laughs> thank you for asking me. When you sent me these questions, that was one of the things that I was like, thank you, Jesus. Because um, I don't get to talk about my dad very much. Yeah. Um, uh, a, kind of an interesting little tidbit about me. Um, my parents were almost 20 years in age difference. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, Daddy was my older? dad was tw almost 20 years older than my mom. Yeah. So, um, a, when, when your first child is not born into your mid forties and you really never thought you would have kids, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, I had the, the blessing of him actively pouring Jesus all over. And I, you mm -hmm. know, in my salvation story, I talked about the, the, um, the, the blank, the red blanket that represented the blood of Jesus. And yeah. when we were sick, we got under it and we prayed and, you know, and all of that. But my dad was incredibly consistent every single night of coming in and reading the Bible to us in a passage, yeah. whatever we were reading, and then praying with us. Mm -hmm. And that was that was his routine. He would come in, he would read scripture, and he would pray with us. And a lot of times you get into scripture and you're like, as a kid in particular, I was like, tell me that story. Yeah. And he would take the word of God, which is why I love the word of God so much. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful for this. He would take the passage that he just read to us and he would turn it around and he would tell me that story. Wow. So it was like, it was real. To, it was were, real. You were able to envision. Yes. Yeah. In language I understood. Right. Because yeah. grew, I grew up with the King James version of yeah. the Bible. It's a lot of old English and yeah. all of that, that all the fun yeah, stuff. All those, yeah. you know, all of those difficult, you know, things to understand. Mm -hmm. But I understood by the time I was 10, what sanctification meant. Wow. That's huge. Wow. I knew what, and, and little did I know, and now until an adult, that what he was doing was discipling me. Mm -hmm. 
in God's word. He was teaching me theology. Mm -hmm. He was teaching me who God was. He was teaching me who Jesus was. He was teaching me all based on scripture. Mm -hmm. He he was discipling me in God's word Mm -hmm. because he would break it down. He would tell me that story and he would just bring the word of God to life. The other thing is, I, I don't know if he knew this or not, but I you know, kind of discovered my best learning style is to listen. Mm-hmm. I love podcasts. Yeah. I, love, um, I love to listen to things. I love to, I love to listen mm-hmm. to the word of God. Music speaks to my spirit. God yeah. has done more convicting with me and um, teaching me and reminding me of scriptural truths and all of that through music. Listening is a big part of mm-hmm. how I learn. Yeah. And so I also love to listen to sermons. I love mm-hmm. sermons. Yeah. I love preaching and shout out to Pastor Steve because he's really, <laughs> yeah. I love He's pre- powerful. He's powerful. Yeah. And, I mean, and we get the blessing of having great preaching here. Yeah, you know, we really every do. Sunday. But I, I learned more about the word of God, listening to the, to the Bible uh, hour on the radio yeah. with a teacher that is forever and ever ago, J. Vernon McGee. Mm-hmm. And um, he would, there again, take scripture and break it down and put it into a historical context to wow. give you the reality of what God's word is. Yeah. God's word is not a history book. It's a real stories. It's a, yeah. yeah. The, but but if, it, if it speaks historically, it's true. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Mm-hmm. And so I got to listen to all of that. Little did I know that all of that was discipling me. Wow. Yeah. All of that. And so now the word of God, I love the word of God. Mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. the word of God. Yeah. I know theology. I know who God is. Mm-hmm. Do I know all of it? No. And I'm grateful I don't. My little finite brain, so finite, mm-hmm. so scattered at times. I get to learn more yeah. all the time, but I get the opportunity now to take scripture mm-hmm. and break it open each week for my ladies in my life group. I love that. And, and I know they love you. And I, <laughs> I've been teaching this ladies group for 11 years. Yeah. I love them. Mm. I love them. Mm. And I get to what my dad did for me, break that open and mm. it's, different now because it's a group of adult ladies yeah. you know yeah. I get to tell them that story what a gift that yeah. is so sweet and all along how God was just preparing you for what he has for you now through your dad's ministry and Absolutely. what how he's influenced you yeah. and so now you getting to do that for other ladies Absolutely. how cool is that and it's a very it's a very cool um, thing to see what God has done in yeah. his faithfulness mm-hmm. and his thread of grace that just woven through our lives yeah. at so many different places. So who's had the most spiritual influence on me? Now, listen, I do not want to discount my mom and all yeah. of that because my mom, I adore her. She's a prayer warrior. My dad was a prayer warrior, and I'm grateful that my mom still prays for me every day, and she also knows and teaches the Word of God. That's and awesome. She's powerful, and she was also very instrumental yeah. in that. But that nightly... Tell me that story. He was consistent with you, and now you're consistent with your kids yeah. in that. That's so cool. And it's a, it looks a little different. Yeah. It looks a little different, Yeah, you know, um, because life is different. Right. It looks a little different, mm-hmm. and yet it's still same faithful God. Same faithful God. Same faithful God. Yeah. Same faithful word of God, mm-hmm. truth of God, mm-hmm. love of God. Yeah. It just gets to carry forward. I love that so much, Brenda. Thank you for sharing that. So if you could say one thing to these ladies listening in, um, what about the importance of discipleship, what would it be? Mm. You know, it's so important. Yeah. So important. So what's one thing you think would be the most important thing? There's so much. I know. I know. There's so much. When I think about being a disciple who makes disciples, right, I feel like for me, I do it best when I am focusing on my relationship with Jesus first and not letting everything else crowd on my attention because I can't minister out of an empty heart, right? You cannot. Yeah. You cannot. And I mean, transparency moment, there have been times in my life Mm -hmm. 
when it was a rote practice. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yes. And me too. There's been seasons. Distractions, yeah. seasons, difficult, and I'm a long way along mm -hmm. further in this <laughs> life than you are. Um, and yeah, there are distractions that you do it out of kind of rote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I would say that the depth of your own love for God, mm -hmm. obedience to God, and and genuine desire to follow him mm -hmm. will lead you to that next step in your journey. Yeah. And the journey, most important, the journey's worth it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the valleys and the high points, absolutely. I feel like, you know, because God's in every, every single one of us. Absolutely. Yeah. The journey is worth it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's worth it because to see God's hand of faithfulness, life happens to all of us. Yeah. We've lost jobs. Mm -hmm. We've had we've had we've lost people. Mm -hmm. My dad passed away in 2004, oh. and did not get to meet um, three of his younger grandsons, and that oh. saddens me. Yeah. And did not get to know well, um, you know, my boys as mm -hmm. they grow up. We look th that those that ends. <laughs> yeah, those yeah. things end. Um, we've had loss. We've had upheaval we've had struggle difficulty all of that stuff mm -hmm. is just life it happens to everybody yeah but it's there's a suffering. tremendous mm -hmm. difference between going through that alone or even going through it with a superficial relationship with Jesus and the difference between walking with Jesus consistently mm -hmm. and knowing his presence yeah. through it yeah knowing full well cuz i mean there're many times difficulty hits mm -hmm. and if i'm not in a in a closer proximity to jesus i always consider it where i'm arm length from him as opposed to sitting right by him mm -hmm. he's never left yeah. but i've been arm's length mm -hmm. and if i'm at arm's length i'm asking the question how do i trust him life is falling apart mm -hmm. how do i do that yeah. how do i trust you how do i trust you and if i'm asking that question that's how i know i'm at arm's distance from jesus that's a cool image to think of right yeah. he hasn't moved he, he hasn't, hasn't moved yeah, but we move i move yeah. Yeah. i move mm -hmm. and when i'm walking in proximity with jesus when the inevitable hits mm -hmm. Which it always will. Yeah. It always will. It always will. <laughs> Just keep living life. Just keep yeah. living life. It always will. Yeah. If I'm in close proximity with Jesus, then I can go, okay, mm -hmm. this doesn't shock him. Yeah. And I know he's faithful. Mm -hmm. And you can bank on that. Every you can bank time, on that no every single time. Situation is. I don't yep. know the outcome, mm -hmm. but I know he's faithful. Mm -hmm. I don't have to know the outcome. I just know he's faithful. Yeah. As opposed to, how do I trust? What do I do? And mm -hmm. I've been in that frantic moment. Mm -hmm. And even at some points resented people for saying, well, just trust the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. me being far away when that's mm -hmm. difficult. And it's cool to know we don't have to know what's going to happen. We can know who right. is there, you know. And it's that's huge. why I love the Bible reading plan here. Yes. Because every single morning, there's no guesswork. We, nope. we know what the next nope. scripture yep. is going to be that we're going to read. That's right. And it keeps me, having a game plan keeps uh, me in tune with God's word. Even so with, important. you know, cooking every week, having a game plan of what, you know, it keeps, yep. I'm going to cook that because that's what I bought. That's right. Yeah. So I love that because when there are seasons where in life is a little bit harder, Right. I, I I've been reading it. God's word. Right. So I know what's true over this situation. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. So, so yeah. I would just I would just say stay in close proximity to Jesus because it's worth it. Yeah. That's so good. That's so powerful, Brenda. Thank Did that you. answer your question? Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. I think that's so good. <laughs> well, okay, we're approaching Christmas, which today doesn't today feels like it's almost summer. It like does. It's, it's warm outside. Sixty five degrees. <laughs> but Christmas is coming. It is. So um, this will be your first Christmas with Judah. It will. Yeah. yeah. So I yeah. I wanna know what you're looking forward to the most at this Christmas season. Um Goodness, I, I am looking forward to having that baby in yeah. our world. I mean, I look forward to Christmas because it, I get the opportunity to celebrate at different stages, mm -hmm. you know, of my of 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 life, yeah. you know, with my kids and and in and out. And, you know, it's got we've gotten to where the stage in life where each Christmas look is a little bit unique, yeah. you know, based on where everybody's gonna be and when we're gonna be together and you know, all of that. And I've kind of learned just to 
I mean, sometimes we just have to plan. It's a mm-hmm. little different each year, you know. Um, but I am looking forward to that time with that baby. And as yeah. he grows, of course, you know, kind so of cute. things are opening up a little bit. He's already got, um, he's already got his first little. Oh, I can't. Uh, maybe I should, I should <laughs> say. Do you find no, no, yourself no. wanting to go to stores and Every, buy things? all the time, all yeah. the time? That's like Amazon's zero to six month section. You yeah. know, it's like Cyber my Monday favorite. was good. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, that's um, great. And just loving on him, and yeah. you know, all that. But but there again, you know, being able to love my kids with yeah. some tangible things mm-hmm. that they that they want is a pretty cool thing. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Every, you know, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to a little downtime. Yeah. You know, yeah. I take, I take that week off, you know, mm-hmm. from work and having a little downtime. Um, it's all pretty special. Yeah. That's so good. I yeah. love that. Yeah. We're going to be visiting family too. And I love the Christmas season because yeah. you know, who it's about Jesus. That's and right. Getting to get together with family and celebrate that together. Uh, is just, it's just so much fun. It is. So I love that yeah. Brenda. Well, thank you. <gasps> you are so this welcome. This has been a lot of fun. I can just I keep talking. It with you. I loved it. Thank you. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us on December's edition of She Flourishes, and we will see you in 2023 for our next podcast. Have a great day.